Chapter 9 Paget spread cream cheese over a toasted bagel and bit into it with relish. She was one of the few people who had risen in time to enjoy the breakfast spread that had been set out for the guests who had stayed overnight. Brunch would be much better attended. Right now everyone was scattered across the terrace in small groups enjoying the cool morning air. She had left Max sleeping upstairs. For a few minutes she'd simply stared at him, enjoying the luxury of trying to memorize his face. He was a handsome man, and she wondered what he would look like when he was older. She looked forward to finding out. "'I'd laid off the bagel and cream cheese,' Tiffany remarked as she sat down at Paget's table. "'You've gained weight.' The creamy goodness turned to sawdust in Paget's mouth. She dropped the rest of the bagel on her plate. "'Good morning, Tiffany. How are things going? Looking forward to today?' "'Why would I look forward to Trisha's wedding? She's my youngest.' Now everyone will remark how good I look for my age. Tiffany sipped her green tea. No sugar, of course. I'm going to need another facelift. Paget didn't answer Tiffany's comment. Her sister looked perfect as always. She'd stirred her own strawberry tea and took a sip. I hope you're going to wear something nicer than the dress you wore last night, Tiffany remarked. Excuse me? Paget looked at her sister in surprise. Tell me you didn't find it in some discount store. Tiffany shuddered. It looked awfully cheap. That dress had put a dent of twelve hundred dollars in Paget's credit card. She bit her lip. I can't afford the best any more, Tiffany. Well, the way that dress looked, you might as well have showed up in a paper sack. Tiffany sipped her tea and wrinkled her nose. Please tell me of something better for the wedding. Paget had two dresses upstairs. One was paid for, a chance find at a second-hand store that she had paid a fraction of the retail price for. However, if Tiffany had pulled her nose up at last night's dress, then there was no doubt she would abhor this choice. The other dress was on discount from a shop that Paget used to frequent. It was still expensive, and Paget had crossed her fingers when she slid her credit card through the reader. It was too much. Paget knew that she should just return it. Otherwise, she was going to be in rougher financial shape than she already was. "'I do. I'm just not sure if I should wear it,' Paget murmured. "'Well, if you come in something worse than last night, you might as well just go home. "'It would be better than having everyone pity me, because my sister can't be bothered to dress appropriately.' "'Tiffany dumped the rest of her tea into a potted plant and stood. "'Really, Paget, you still represent this family. "'Now is not the time to go freestyle and hippie.' "'Paget's mouth dropped open as she watched her sister leave. "'She and Tiffany had never been especially close.' but her sister didn't normally make a habit of openly insulting her. A cell phone rang, and Paget realized it was hers. She didn't recognize the number, but chose to answer it anyways. "'Mrs. Williams, this is Helen from First National Credit. Am I speaking to pay Paget Williams?' "'Speaking. Paget wondered why her credit card company would be calling her. "'Mrs. Williams, as a courtesy, we'd like to inform you that you are overdrawn on your credit card by two thousand eight hundred. Seventy-three dollars and twelve cents. Your current balance is fourteen thousand six hundred eighty-three dollars and eight cents. You have missed your last two payments. We require payment of two thousand seven hundred and six dollars by the seventeenth of this month. Otherwise, we will have to pursue collections. We will not be extending you any further credit until payments have been made. Do you have any questions, Mrs. Williams? Paget wondered how the numbers had gotten so big. She didn't have twenty-seven hundred dollars for a payment. She could feel panic unfolding in her chest. She knew she had spent extravagantly for the wedding, considering her budget. Paget swallowed thickly and replied, trying to breathe normally. No, no questions. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. We look forward to your payment. Have a nice day. Helen ended the call. Paget put her cell phone down and stared at it. She needed to return the expensive dress. It was the only solution to her credit card problem. However, Tiffany said she might as well go home if she wore anything inferior to the wedding. Paget knew Tiffany would never lend her a dress. She wouldn't fit them anyways. Tiffany was a size one. Paget had bloomed from a size three to a size six since Gary's death. Could she wear the dress and then return it? If she was careful and ate nothing at dinner, drank nothing but water, kept it clean as possible, and removed it immediately after the reception, could she do it? Did she dare? Paget dropped her head in her hands, and Tiffany's scathing words rang in her ears. What choice did she have?
The wedding was a complete social success. Paget saw reporters from People's Magazine and a couple other magazines taking photos and asking questions. Tiffany would be pleased to see her daughter make a splash. Trisha was stunningly beautiful, and Jordan looked very handsome. They made a gorgeous couple. The doves went up into the sky without a hitch, despite Aunt Lucille worrying they might poop on someone during their flight. Speeches were given, and everyone toasted the bride and groom happily. Paget did the best she could to keep the dress perfectly clean. She had carefully tucked the attached tag inside with a bobby pin. Her hair was a mass of curls, left down to camouflage the bump the tag made. She knew the dress wasn't up to the standards of the majority of women in attendance today, but it was the best she had. She only hoped that she could get through the night and return it next week. She pushed her food gently around her plate and didn't eat. She drank only water. Thankfully, she had loaded up on brunch before the wedding, so she wasn't entirely starving. Max leaned in and asked if she wasn't hungry. She smiled and replied that she was fine, then took another sip of water. So far, the dress was okay. Paget, on the other hand, felt like a bundle of nerves. She wouldn't be able to relax until she got the dress off and safely back in the garment bag. At the reception, she danced with Max. She felt good about turning down Earl. He tended to be sweaty, and she really didn't need a palm print on her waist. She turned down a bunch of others and simply enjoyed being with Max. It was a lovely wedding. Max went to get them a couple of drinks. Correction, he went to get himself a drink and her another glass of water. He was being very attentive. Then again, he usually was. Paget loved this about him. She was thinking about all the other things she loved about Max while she sat at their table waiting for his return, when Paget felt a sharp tug at the back of her dress and turned to see her mother. Judith grabbed Paget's hand and put the sail tag in her palm. Your tag was sticking out. Her tag. The tag that had to be attached to return the dress. The dress that had put Paget's credit card over its limit, causing the company to call her this morning and suspend her credit card. Paget gulped in some air, but didn't feel like she was getting any in. She felt like she was drowning. Paget knew she shouldn't have worn this dress, but Tiffany's snide remarks about yesterday's dress at breakfast had compelled her. Now what was she going to do? She couldn't return the dress and get her credit back. Paget could see black spots in front of her eyes. Quickly, she leaned down and ducked her head near to her knees, the dress being too constricting to let her put her head between them. She closed her eyes and prayed that she wasn't going to faint. "'Oh, don't be so dramatic,' Judith remarked snidely. "'It was just a tag. Although, if you are going to advertise how much you paid for a dress, you could have bought a pricier one.' "'No, mother, I couldn't. I couldn't afford this one,' Paget said, fighting hysteria. "'I shouldn't have worn it, let alone even bought it.' "'Sit up. It's embarrassing,' her mother hissed at her. "'Of course you could afford it. Why wouldn't you be able to?' "'Gary died in debt. There's no money.' "'Haven't you figured that out by now?' Paget blinked back tears of frustration. "'If that's the case, I don't see why you won't take our offer of the condo.' Judith sat down and sipped from her champagne flute. "'Could you please get Max?' Paget asked miserably. He was the only one who would understand right now. He was the only one she wanted right now. Paget's life was a mess, and she had only made it worse.' She just wanted the one person that she knew, without a shadow of a doubt, who would put her first, who would help her figure this out without putting her down, who believed in her, who loved her. With a sigh, Judith set down her fluted glass and got up to find Max. Thankful, Paget closed her eyes and concentrated on breathing slow and not passing out. After a few long minutes, Max was crouched beside Paget, one hand on her knee and the other on her shoulder. Paget, what's wrong? How do I help? "'Please get me out of here,' Paget whispered. Without further questioning, Max simply had her wrap an arm around his neck and picked her up. He took her through the patio, into the house, and then to the bedroom that they had shared. He sat her on the bed and knelt in front of her. "'Do you want to talk about it?' "'I don't know why I came,' Paget sniffed. "'They belittle me. They insult me. They don't believe that I can accomplish anything with my life other than being someone's plus one. Your niece got married. You love your family. You made the effort. Max gently opened her hand and looked at the tag. What's this? Paget wiped away tears. I overextended my credit to try to match their expectations. I'm overdrawn on my bank account. 
I only paid a partial for this month's rent. I was stupid. Four thousand two hundred dollars, Max gave a low whistle. I was planning on returning it after the weekend, but my mother ripped the tag off. She thought she was doing me a favor. Paget gave a bitter laugh. She looked at her manicured nails and wished she hadn't gotten them done. I've never had a budget before this year, and I find that I'm not terribly good at it. I've been trying hard to economize. This was supposed to be one last party, and then it was all over. I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to wash your face, redo your makeup, and then you and I are going to go back out there. We're going to ignore all of them. It's a party, and we can enjoy it together, the two of us. He looked at Paget so sincerely that she didn't have the heart to tell him that she didn't want to. Then, on Monday, we'll find a consignment shop and we'll put up the dress for a loss. I'll put up two of my suits. Max, you can't do that, Paget protested. Pick the one you like the best and that's the one I'll save out of the three I have, Max said reasonably. We'll get the money to make you more comfortable with your finances. It's only a short-term solution. What you need is a roommate and I'm volunteering. I'll sleep on the couch, pay half the rent, utilities, groceries. It should help ease some of the financial burden you're under. What about paying the hospital bills? Will you be able to afford helping me? Paget wiped another tear as it rolled down her cheek. It will just take longer to pay back. That's okay. If we do this together, we'll both slowly get it all sorted out. Max rubbed her arms gently. Paget nodded. Thank you. Hey, I love you. Max gave her a lopsided smile. If you like, I'll budget for both of us. I'd rather you teach me, Paget smiled back in spite of her misery. He really was an amazing man, and she was lucky to have him. Okay, I can do that. Paget took a deep breath. I'm going to change into my less expensive dress so that I don't have to worry about ruining this one with some spilled wine or something. Is that why you were only having water all night? Max asked gently. She nodded. I know it's wrong to return a dress you've worn, but it was all that I could think of to do. Max leaned up and kissed her on the forehead. Well, if you change, does that mean you can have cake tonight? Paget gave a watery smile. Yes. Well then, get changed. You and I want some of that cake. Plus, I know you don't want to miss out on the wine. It's the good stuff. She laughed, then gave Max a kiss. It took a moments to change, fix her makeup, and take his arm so that they could return to the party and eat cake together. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of The Reverse Cinderella. Also, please like this video. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.